My name is Lori Berkeley, and I am the North Florida Regional Water Supply Planning Coordinator at the St. John's River Water Management District. And I will continue the presentation with a review of the wetlands and water quality assessment. Wetlands are an important resource in the North Florida planning region, and this map shows the distribution of over 100,000 acres of wetlands throughout the North Florida area. The potential for adverse change to wetland function is part of the water resource constraint assessment for this planning effort. The wetland assessment will use spatial data and model scenario output to evaluate the potential for adverse change to wetlands due to projected future demands for water. We will consider the depth to the water table, sensitive vegetation, soil type, aquifer confinement, projected future demand, and drawdown in the superficial aquifer when assessing potential impacts to wetlands. This assessment is ongoing and will provide a regional picture of potential change to wetlands. The assessment will not identify specific wetlands at risk. Rather, it will show general areas where there is potential concern. <laughs> the district's regulatory programs are responsible for specific wetland impact verification and monitoring. While we don't have the wetland results to share today, the MFL water bodies that were just discussed are the major constraint in the region. The wetland assessment methodology and results will be posted to the North Florida Partnership webpage when we post the other water resource constraint assessment methodologies. Finally, we also looked at recent and historic water quality data to determine the current status of chloride concentrations in the upper Florida aquifer and trends in chloride concentration through time. Chloride was selected as the uh, water quality analyte to evaluate as it is a principal constituent in seawater and is therefore indicative of saltwater intrusion. Groundwater quality degradation due to saltwater intrusion is a consideration for this planning effort since degrading water quality can affect the productivity of existing infrastructure and dictate backplugging, well inactivation and replacement, advanced treatment technology, withdrawal point relocation, and conversion to alternative water supplies all of which result in increased cost. The first product that we created was a regional map of recent chloride concentrations in the upper Florida aquifer using water quality data compiled from the two districts monitoring well networks as well as water quality data from permitted wells. The map on the next slide represents the average chloride concentrations in the upper Florida aquifer from 2016 to 2020. In this map, the light blue color shows us that the majority of the region has less than 100 milligrams per liter of chloride in the groundwater. In the eastern portion of the planning region, you can see two areas of elevated chloride concentrations in coastal Nassau and Duval counties. There is also an overall increase in concentration as you move from north to south, where you will find broad areas of higher chloride concentrations in southern St. John's, eastern Putnam, and Flagler counties. Given the elevated chloride concentration, these areas are more vulnerable to groundwater quality degradation. In addition to the recent chloride concentration map of the region, which gives us a snapshot in time of what the water quality in the upper Florida aquifer looks like, we were interested in whether there were any changes in chloride concentration through time. The first way we evaluated this was by creating a series of chloride concentration maps at five-year intervals from 2006 to 2020. We focused on the movement of the 250 milligram per liter isophore 
to evaluate whether we were seeing any indications of saltwater intrusion. An isophore is simply a line of equal chloride concentration in the upper Florida aquifer, as will be seen on the next map. The main objective of this mapping effort was to evaluate the movement of the 250 milligram per liter isophore at five year intervals from 2006 to 2020. We selected a fluoride concentration of 250 milligrams per liter to monitor since this is the secondary drinking water standard for fluoride and represents the extent of potable water in the upper Florida aquifer and can be used to evaluate the movement of the saltwater interface through time. In Duval County, you will notice that the earliest isophore is not present, but then the isophores expand from the 2011 to 2015 time interval to the 2016 to 2020 time interval. Expanding isophores that are isolated from the coast are indicative of upcoming or the upward vertical movement of deeper, lower quality water, as opposed to lateral saltwater encroachment from the coast. This kind of vertical movement can occur due to the natural upward gradients and flow within the aquifer system, but can also be the result of pumping. In Southern St. John's, Eastern Putnam, and Flagler counties, which is down in this area, you will notice that the three different isophore lines from 2006 to 2020 are not very distinct from each other, which tells us that the isophore has not moved much since 2006. What is also important to note is that there is no consistent movement of the isophore in a landward direction near the coast, which would have been indicative of lateral saltwater encroachment. This region has been stable for the past 15 years. However, it is susceptible to upcoming and lateral saltwater encroachment. The second way that we looked at trends in water quality through time was to assess the fluoride concentrations in 17 permitted production wells that were evaluated in the 2017 North Florida Regional Water Supply Plan. These wells were selected for further evaluation since they had shown increasing trends in fluoride concentrations from the previous assessment. Time series plots of fluoride concentration and the average rate of withdrawal were visually interpreted for breaks and slope over the period of record. And then each segment was statistically analyzed for significant trends. The final segment was used to evaluate the current potential trend in concentration. Water quality from these wells was assessed over a time period extending from as early as 1998 to 2021 based on the availability of data. The assessment showed that fluoride concentration increased, decreased, and stayed stable at different intervals over the period of record for a given well. The direction that the fluoride concentrations were trending in the final time segment was used to evaluate the current potential trend in fluoride concentrations for that well. Of the 17 wells that had increasing trends from the previous assessment, now only five wells have an increasing trend. One well has a decreasing trend, and 11 wells are stable or are showing no trend at all. Well field management, such as back plugging, reduced pumping rates, and relocation of withdrawals elsewhere, has been successful in managing the increasing fluoride trends in the majority of these wells. The five wells with increasing trends are located in Southern Flagler and Duval County. In Flagler County, the aquifer has a higher transmissivity, which allows seawater to more easily encroach from the coast, making these wells more susceptible to saltwater intrusion. But as we discussed earlier, the area has been stable for the previous 15 years. And since the source is stable, 
some utilities in this area use membrane treatment to meet potable standards. Duval County is characterized by faulting and fracturing that allows lower quality water in the lower Floridian aquifer to mix with fresh water in the upper Floridian aquifer through upward leakage. The upcoming appears to be localized as other monitoring wells in the vicinity do not show the increasing trends. Groundwater quality in these areas may constrain the availability of fresh groundwater due to the susceptibility in both vertical and lateral saltwater intrusion, but with continued wellfield management, these trends can be addressed. The results of the water resource evaluation indicate that additional sources may be able to meet some, but not all, of the projected water demand in the North Florida planning area, and therefore water demand projections exceed groundwater availability. This is most evident by the MFL water bodies that are currently not achieving their MFL or are projected to not achieve their MFLs under the 2045 pumping conditions. The evaluation also identified wells with increasing chloride trends in areas of elevated chloride concentrations. The wetland analysis is also likely to show the general areas where there is potential concern for adverse change. Since traditional sources alone cannot meet future demand while protecting water resources, additional projects will need to be identified. While much has already been accomplished in the planning area, the districts and stakeholders need to continue to work together to investigate additional alternative water supply projects to meet future needs and identify opportunities for aquifer recharge. We need to work collectively to identify and implement additional water conservation efforts as well. Continued collaboration is needed amongst the St. John's and Suwannee River Water Management District and stakeholders in the region to identify opportunities and solutions to meet future demand while protecting the water resource. So what is next in the planning process? We will post the draft methodologies and results on the North Florida Partnership webpage in December and receive written comments through the end of January. And as we just discussed, active participation from stakeholders in the planning area is vital to ensure that the plan meets the needs of commercial, agricultural, environmental, and urban uses while protecting the natural resources so vital to our quality of life. And to facilitate this participation, we will be sending out project solicitation letters in early January, and we'll also begin an outreach effort by meeting with stakeholders in the region. This next slide is a high level overview of the major milestones in the planning process over the next year. With the intent to finalize the regional water supply plan by the end of 2023. Before we conclude, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Emily <laughs> to talk about the other upcoming efforts in the planning area. 